Hey everybody, welcome back to Drawing One with Vince Mancuso. Uh, today, in, in, in today's uh, video discussion, uh, I want to talk about the concept of a quality drawing. What really defines a quality drawing? Okay. Uh, now, we have to start by understanding that that definition is completely different in the design production world uh, and different uh, to artists who actually uh, are applied artists who practice the discipline of drawing professionally, okay? Uh, as opposed to the way that the average person, okay, an enthusiast, uh, sees what a quality drawing is. An enthusiast selects a kind of highly executed, very specific, uniquely distinct type of uh, drawing or painting to admire. For example, like a Michelangelo or a Monet or a, uh, a Picasso. Um, uh, something that a person has elevated to a high standard which is unique to them and their skill. So they have fetishized, they've, 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 they've made the drawing and painting a fetish uh, object, okay? Very different than applied practical usages in design production. So let, let me explain uh, or show you what that means, okay? Um, like take a look at this idea here. So. All of us, at some point, start, okay, here, okay, all of us, right? When we're innocent children uh, starting to pick up a, a, a tool or a device that actually makes a mark, we make circles, we make triangles, we make squares, we make little squigglies, okay? And we all can do this, right? And then, in no short order, we discover, oh, a circle. And if I put a dot and a line, all of a sudden, uh, I see myself. I see the people around me. I see a face. All right? Now, this transition of starting to be able to take abstract shapes and marks and starting to see them, and associate them symbolically to real things, right, is the next stage in our creative evolution as far as communication through drawing, telling stories through symbols, all right? And the majority of us, okay, experience drawing, say, where you do not understand the physical perspective or forms or phenomena that might be happening around you to an acute sense, but you can use symbolic shapes to interpret them. And so here you're looking at a drawing, for example, that was done by my six-year-old. My, my six-year-old uh, son, Max. Okay? And obviously, look, this is, this is an Iron Man, right? Very specifically, the classic Iron Man with the red suit, right? But he's designed, he's, 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 he's applied a design variation here. He's put guns, machine guns, right? On the shoulders, right? Which is a uh, characteristic of War Machine, a different uh, Iron Man character. So he's communicating to you a very specific design idea through symbolic shapes, okay? Uh, take a look here, right? If, if we look at uh, this situation, let me get the, my color here, right? You know, there's, there's a ovid shape, right? There's a square shape, there's a triangular shape, and there are long uh, rectangles, right? Uh, that uh, and, and sort of triangles, right, that define the limbs, okay? So he's using symbolic means to communicate his Iron Man idea. Now, I would expect that every one of you in the class is capable of communicating very specific ideas in this manner. If you can't, 
you should really evaluate what you're doing at a design school that is based around visual communication. This is rudimentary. All right. So if I say to you, you know, I'd want to see two people sitting at a cafe, uh, you know, uh, having a conversation, you know, and you do nothing more than this. and you give me something like this, you know, I would expect you to be able to do that and, and lay that out, say, in an entire storyboard or an entire campaign or in an, uh, used in a design application through some sort of print medium like an annual report or a magazine or a newspaper and communicate your, your idea intentions to people sitting at a, a table uh, you know, having a conversation, you know, at a cafe. Okay. Now, in drawing one, our goal is to migrate you over, right, to understanding some of the principles that actually create a naturalism, right? A kind of uh, believable realism that's kind of shorthand, you know, achieved very quickly for the purpose of design communication, right? These are the things that I'm going to introduce to you. The uh, exercises, exercise, that you need to do to be able to draw more accurately. And why? Why is this important? Well, it's important for this reason. Check it out. Okay. Um, when you draw symbolically, this is kind of more universal. Okay, so it's more open-ended, right? It's like a happy face. This could be a thousand faces. We know it's a human face. We know it's a happy face, but it's not a specific person. Okay, when you draw more realistically, more accurately, uh, precise in your proportions and precise in the criteria of the object, you know, um, you know, like a like a 1967, you know, Mustang Fastback, you know, that has to have a particular grill, a particular look, a particular slant in the in the uh, side profile of the rear end um, that makes things more specific. And both these elements are absolutely essential in design production, okay? So this is the expectation. I expect you to be able to communicate. How, how you do that, that is up to you, all right? If you're symbolic, because your drawing skills and your knowledge of perspective and form uh, are, are not up to being able to be more accurate and more realistic, that's fine. Okay, so let's take a look at this now. I, I, I want to show you something. I'll explain. This, is, this comes from uh, uh, a book. Uh, actually, let me show you the, uh, the cover. Here it is. Uh, Understanding Comics, The Invisible Art by Scott McCloud. I really recommend that you pick it up. Um, it, it literally uh, gives you all the fundamentals required to become visually literate and understand what being visually capable to see and, uh, and, and, and to create ideas on a two-dimensional uh, platform and on a three-dimensional platform and understand how that crosses over, okay? So some of these examples I'm taking from this book, right? Here's one which is perfect for what I want to talk about now, right? I've just talked about this evolution, right? As we see here from the symbolic meaning, right? Which is, right, here in this corner, right? Let's just get this, yeah, right, right in there, right? And how and we go from here, for example, and we move all the way across the spectrum, right, into the notion of real, okay? Look at that, okay? 
So these are obviously photographic uh, images that have been made very contrasty, but you get the idea, right? This is uh, based on a photorealism. It's as real as you can get, right? So this triangular uh, uh, chart actually plots out, right? The uh, symbolic, which I was talking about earlier with the Iron Man, the real and here, right, the abstract. Now, in your own personal development in drawing one, okay, it's very important that you start to figure out, right, through the work and the exercises, where do you fall? Where do you fall within this triangle, okay? If you can see here all the different examples that, that Scott McCloud is pointing out, these are all famous comic book artists, right, or artists who have done works, right, in a particular way. And then in a particular style, and you can see how they, they go from the realistic to transitioning into the symbolic, right? And being stripped down literally to two dots in the line with a smiley face, right? Like Rin Tin Tin is really no more than a simple happy face, right? You know, Charlie Brown, okay? Mickey Mouse, right? Astro Boy. And as we start moving up towards the peak, towards the apex, right? Look how things start getting more and more abstract, right? To the point where they disintegrate into uh, almost unrecognizable and then completely recognizable formal abstract 2D forms, which is the reality of working two-dimensionally, right? Working two-dimensionally is just the elements of design, right? Line, shape, uh, form, uh, scale, okay? Placed in a, in a compositional environment. Right? So as you are going through drawing one, what is imperative is you start asking yourself, where do I fit? What is my tendency? Am I more cartoony? Am I more sort of kind of uh, a graphic stylization of reality? Am I more abstract or expressionistic? Or am I more naturalistic and realistic? And all of you will find, just like your signatures, you are all completely unique in the way that you make marks and the way that you approach it. Now, this is very important that you start to develop an understanding of where your tendency is. And here's one of the things you've got to watch out for, one of the trappings, especially for young people, you know, or people just starting out in drawing. It is the fact that they don't, recognize what they are and they jump to an aspiration of something that they admire which is why they got interested in the first place and then they disappoint themselves you know because you might admire Michelangelo or you might admire Jack Kirby but you're not Jack Kirby or you're not Michelangelo so the innate sensitivities and feelings and approach and, and, and style um, is not a good fit for you. You know, you might admire it, but trying to get yourself to, to fit that style is like taking a circle and trying to put it into a, a square hole. And you can work against yourself. And this is non-productive. This is where people start to quit when they don't live up to the expectations that they... Um, they see for themselves or they admire. You have to start at the ground. You have to do a lot of work and begin to see what your tendencies are and then start to recognize them and say, wow, you know, my work tends to look more like this artist over here, which is more cartoony. I mean, I might admire uh, Frank Franzetta or Norman Rockwell, but that's not where my natural... Uh, skills are. They tend to be more designy and more stylized, okay? So let's take a look at this, right? So here's a very important idea. So when you look at a photo, right, you're seeing a realistic face. So you see uh, the face of another person, a very specific, right? The more drawing information that you put in, uh, proportions, detail, you know, accuracy, and the more specific it looks, right? Um, then it, 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 it's um, a very particular thing, right? Not as open to interpretation, right? But when you look at a cartoon, right? Now, it's more universal. Anyone who sees this can project 
themselves, right? Or a hundred thousand different people. They just know that it's a human face. So this difference, this polar, this opposing uh, poles, is very important thing to understand. This is very important. Okay, so we've just talked about this idea of going from the the the, the, the symbolic, right? This way to the photo or realist. Right? Okay. Now, for our purposes, of course, the abstract doesn't come into play because we're not concerned with self-expression here. We're concerned with applied services to client needs. Okay. That's the whole idea of becoming a professional artist, right? So, you know, in one form or another, we're going to be dealing with some form of communication that will either reside here on the cartoon level, right? Or uh, let's do this in red. Let's do this in red. On the cartoon level or the realist level, somewhere in between here. Okay. But here's the dividing line. This is very important, right? This is where the abstract thinking and symbolism splits, right, from, you know, uh, pictures to words, right? And this is where, for example, you know, you have the artist on one side, the visual artist, the illustrator, the art director, right, working with, you know, the screenwriter, okay, the copywriter, the writer, all right, the, the person who is dealing now with absolute abstract ideas, you know, the only reason why these forms make you see a face is because you accept the system of, of the alphabet and sound to make a word that has a specific meaning, okay? Uh, so now you've moved into an incredibly abstract realm of thinking. Right? And that's what the written word is. And it divides. There's a divide. All right? But in the applied world, these two elements, right, primary forms, okay, uh, drawing and writing, you know, visualizing and speaking, okay, work together in multimedia. You have this in television, you have this in film, you have this in games, right? And most things, the most popular art forms, are multimedia art forms. It's as simple as that. Even songs that are the most popular are, are songs that have lyrics, okay? Instrumental music becomes much more niche and much more specific, right? It's a specific taste, a specific desire. Things start to separate out. Okay, this is why you have multiple art forms working together in games and films, TV series, animations, right? Even comic books, graphic novels use the partnership of words and images, all right? So obviously for us, we're dealing with the pictorial. And as I stated earlier, I would expect all of you to be able to draw on a symbolic level. So if all if, if you do nothing else but give me, you know, circles, you know, and and happy faces or, or simple, simple faces like this in communicating ideas uh, that, that I ask you uh, to communicate in the project assignments, you're going to be successful in the class and you're going to pass. OK, I will be teaching you, though, to move along this scale. To develop the skills to be able to move along that this scale as you, the designer, art director, creative director, film director, sees fit to do so conceptually. OK, because when you create, that's going to be, uh, you know, the, the challenges that, that you're going to deal with, right? That you're going to work with, all right? So now let me point out to you, this is really interesting idea, right? You can be an incredibly successful director, all right? And, and not be able to draw or have no need for drawing. At the same time, you can be an incredibly successful director and you draw like Michelangelo, right? Or a professional comic book. Right? And I'm going to show you. Let's take a look at two very powerful elite directors and their drawing abilities. Okay, 
This is a drawing of Steven Spielberg. Now take a look at this. This is exactly what we were talking about. Okay. Here's, this is an aerial view, a floor plan. Right. Look, this is, this is a point of view, right? Here's a camera position, right? It's looking into some sort of vehicle of some sort, right? Like they're looking into the windshield, right? So what he's showing you is the over uh, view of the, the camera angle, and then he's showing you the shot, which is through a windshield, okay? Here's the windshield, right? And you're seeing this face staring back at you through the glass, okay? Now, that's Steven Spielberg, right? So, so how do I spell his name? Spiel? Berg, did I spell that right? Okay. Uh, take a look at something else that, that, that he, he's drawn. Okay. Like, this is a storyboard from uh, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Look at that. Okay. Close up of the face, the railway track in behind here. Okay. This man is drawing at the level of my six year old son. But this is invaluable because he's communicating the sequence, right? The film sequences and action scenes. Look at this, the, the wheel coming off, right? Of the uh, mining uh, cart that's on a rail, all right? Look at this wide angle, right? This is a, a, a wide angle shot. Okay. Now, he's not afraid. He's not apologetic for his, his, his lack of drawing uh, skill or ability. That doesn't matter. You know, he just wants you to understand his vision for the film. Okay? And he's doing it with confidence, right? And purpose, right? Now, let me show you someone, uh, for example, another great filmmaker who's a brilliant, you know, drawer, right? Take a look at this, right? Look. These are the storyboard frames of Ridley Scott, okay? Ridley Scott could be a professional storyboard artist. Look at that. I mean, that's, this is amazing, right? <laughs> look, at, look at his detail in his vision. I mean, production people could actually build these sets. You know, you even get an accurate sense of scale because his drawings are, 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 are quite uh, well proportioned, all right? Take a look at this, all right? Look at that. Okay. This is what a film director, right? Over the shoulder shot with the character. Look at the space suits. Look at the space station and all of the various details, right? Now, this is somebody who practices and develops his drawing skill and cares about having a drawing skill, okay? Now, where you fit in the class doesn't matter to me because... I am going to provide for you the various exercises that you need to be effective and develop and get better, right? And I need you to work fast, right? The speed is God. Speed is significant, especially in, in business, in the applied arts, right? If you can make it great with less time, then you're more profitable, not complicated, right? Here's another... Uh, uh, Ridley Scott, you know, Ridley Scott doesn't have to hire a storyboard artist, right? Steven Spielberg does. Steven Spielberg needs to take his sketches, right, and have them translated by somebody who can draw at this level of detail and specificness and accuracy and proportion so that, you know, people who are not so visually literate, uh, you know, can understand universally, you know, uh, what, what, uh, what, what, what they want, design-wise, right? Because when you start building sets, when you start creating molds and models and, and, and all kinds of uh, compositing, computer, you know, CGI, right? You need to get specific to the specifics, right? Of the design details, right? So somewhere along the process, right? The, the, these drawings, you know, these drawings have to be turned into these drawings. But it doesn't necessarily need to be you. 
All right. So let's recap here as I, I put a wrap on this discussion, right? The expectation in this class is that at the very least, you should be able to draw symbolically, right? To communicate what is being asked for you to communicate in your drawing. And through weekly exercises, I am going to show you the things that you can practice and the key elements that you need to understand and master to improve your drawing so that you can become more specific and more realistic. Okay? That is a migration. What I am grading you on is how effectively you meet your deadlines, how well you communicate what was asked of you to communicate, and then the quality of your drawings. Quality is actually the last on the criteria scale. First is, you know, more is best, right? So put as much detail, as much information, and as much uh, 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 elements that, that you can within the time restriction. Then communicate what is asked of you. Then we look at, at the quality. Okay? Uh, thanks again. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk drawing uh, with Vince Mancuso next time. Bye for now.